River Jude Phoenix, Nay Bottom, August 23, 1970, October 31, 1993, was an American actor, musician, and activist. Phoenix grew up in an itinerant family, as older brother of Rain Phoenix, Joaquin Phoenix, Liberty Phoenix, and Summer Phoenix. He had no formal schooling, but showed an instinctive talent for the guitar. He began his acting career at age 10 in television commercials. He starred in the science fiction adventure film Explorers, 1985, and had his first notable role in 1986's Stand By Me, a coming-of-age film based on the novella The Body by Stephen King. Phoenix made a transition into more adult-oriented roles with Running on Empty, 1988, playing Danny Pope the son of fugitive parents in a well-received performance that earned him a nomination for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. At age 18, he became the sixth youngest nominee in the category, and My Own Private Idaho, 1991, playing Michael Waters, a gay hustler in search of his estranged mother. For his performance in the latter, Phoenix garnered enormous praise and won a Volpe Cup for Best Actor at the 1991 Venice Film Festival as well as Independent Spirit Award for Best Male Lead and National Society of Film Critics Award for Best Actor, becoming the second youngest winner of the former. Phoenix died at the age of 23 from combined drug intoxication in West Hollywood in the early hours of Halloween, 1993, having overdosed on cocaine and heroin, a mixture commonly known as speedball, at the Viper Room. Phoenix was born on August 23, 1970, in Madras, Oregon, the first child of Arlen Dunneets and John Lee Bottom. Phoenix's parents named him after the River of Life from the Herman Hess novel Siddhartha, and he received his middle name from the Beatles' song Hey Jude. In an interview with People, Phoenix described his parents as hippish. His mother was born in New York to Jewish parents whose families had emigrated from Russia and Hungary. His father was a lapsed Catholic from Fontana, California, of English, German, and French ancestry. In 1968, Phoenix's mother traveled across the United States. While hitchhiking in California she met John Lee Bottom. They married on September 13, 1969, less than a year after meeting. Phoenix's family moved cross-country when he was very young. Phoenix has stated that they lived in a desperate situation. Phoenix often played guitar while he and his sister sang on street corners for money and food to support their ever-growing family. Phoenix never attended formal school. Screenwriter Naomi Fonna later commented, he was totally, totally without education. I mean, he could read and write, and he had an appetite for it, but he had no deep roots into any kind of sense of history or literature. George Sloys acclaimed Phoenix was dyslexic. In 1973, the family joined the religious organization known as the Children of God. His family settled in Caracas, Venezuela where the Children of God had stationed them to work as missionaries and fruit gatherers. According to Vanity Fair, Phoenix was raped at the age of four. In an interview with Details magazine in November 1991, Phoenix stated he lost his virginity at age four while in the Children of God, but he had blocked it out. Although Phoenix rarely talked about the cult, he was quoted in an article published in Esquire in 1994 as having said they're disgusting, they're ruining people's lives. In 2019, his brother Joaquin would claim that River was joking, saying, it was a complete and total joke. It was just fucking with the press. It was literally a joke, because he was so tired of being asked ridiculous questions by the press. Arlen and John eventually grew disillusioned with the church. Back in the United States, Arlen began working as a secretary for an NBC broadcaster and John as an exteriors architect. Talent agent Iris Burton spotted River, Joaquin, and their sisters Summer and Rain singing for spare change in Westwood, Los Angeles, and was so charmed by the family that she soon represented the four siblings. 
Phoenix started doing commercials for Mitsubishi, Ocean Spray, and Saks Fifth Avenue, and soon afterward he and the other children were signed by Paramount Pictures casting director Penny Marshall. River and Rain were assigned immediately to a show called Real Kids as audience warm-up performers. In 1980, Phoenix began to fully pursue his career as an actor, making his first appearance on a TV show called Fantasy Singing with his sister Rain. In 1982, Phoenix was cast in the short-lived CBS television series, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, in which he starred as youngest brother Guthrie McFadden. Phoenix arrived at the auditions with his guitar and promptly burst into a convincing Elvis Presley impersonation, charming the show producer. By this age, Phoenix was also an accomplished tap dancer. Almost a year after Seven Brides ended in 1983, Phoenix found a new role in the 1984 television movie Celebrity, in which he played the part of young Jeffrey Crawford. Although only on screen for about 10 minutes, his character was central. Less than a month after Celebrity came the ABC After School special, Backwards, The Riddle of Dyslexia. Phoenix starred as a young boy who discovers he has dyslexia. Joaquin starred in a small role alongside his brother. In September, the pilot episode of short-lived TV series It's Your Move Ed. Phoenix was cast as Brian and only had one line of dialogue. He also starred as Robert Kennedy's son, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., in the TV movie Robert Kennedy and His Times. After his role in dyslexia was critically acclaimed, Phoenix was almost immediately cast in a major role in made-for-TV movie Surviving, A Family in Crisis. He starred as Philip Brogan alongside Molly Ringwald and Heather O'Rourke. Halfway through the filming of Surviving, Iris Burton contacted him about a possible role in the film Explorers. In October 1984, Phoenix secured the role of geeky boy scientist Wolfgang Muller in Giordanti's big-budget science fiction film Explorers alongside Ethan Hawke, and production began soon after. Released in the summer of 1985, this was Phoenix's first major motion picture role. In October 1986, Phoenix co-starred alongside Tuesday Weld and Geraldine Fitzgerald in the acclaimed CBS television movie Circle of Violence, a family drama, which told a story of domestic elder abuse. This was Phoenix's last television role before achieving film stardom. At 16, Phoenix had a significant role in Rob Reiner's popular coming-of-age film Stand By Me, 1986, which made him a household name. Filming started on June 17, 1985, and ended in late August 1985, making River 14 for most, if not all, of the movie. The Washington Post opined that Phoenix gave the film its center of gravity. Phoenix commented, The truth is, I identified so much with the role of Chris Chambers that if I hadn't had my family to go back to after the shoot, I'd have probably had to see a psychiatrist. Later that year Phoenix completed Peter Wears the Mosquito Coast, 1986, playing the son of Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren's characters. He was obviously going to be a movie star, observed Weir. It's something apart from acting ability. Laurence Olivier never had what River had. During the five-month shoot in Belize, Phoenix began a romance with co-star Martha Plimpton, a relationship which continued in some form for many years. Phoenix was surprised by the poor reception for the film, feeling more secure about his work in it than he had in Stand By Me. Phoenix was next cast as the lead in the teen comedy drama A Night in the Life of Jimmy Riordan, 1988, but was disappointed with his performance, it didn't turn out the way I thought it would, and I put the blame on myself. I wanted to do a comedy, and it was definitely a stretch, but I'm not sure I was even the right person for the role. In 1988, Phoenix starred in Little Nikita, 1988, alongside Sidney Poitier. During this time, the Phoenix family continued to move on a regular basis, relocating over 40 times by the time Phoenix was 18. 
Phoenix purchased his family a ranch in Micanopy, Florida, near Gainesville in 1987, in addition to a spread in Costa Rica. His sixth feature film was Sidney Lumet's Running on Empty, 1988, for which 18-year-old River received National Board of Review Award for Best Supporting Actor and nominations for a Golden Globe Award and an Academy Award, becoming the sixth youngest Academy Award nominee in the category. Phoenix jumped to his feet during the ceremony when Kevin Klein beat him to the Oscar. I had to stop River from running to hug Kevin, recalled his mother Arlen. It never crossed his mind that he hadn't won. That year he also portrayed a young Indiana Jones in the box office hit Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade directed by Steven Spielberg. In 1990, Phoenix was photographed by Bruce Weber for Vogue and was spokesperson for a campaign for Gap. In 1991, Phoenix filmed an acclaimed independent picture called Dogfight co-starring Lily Taylor and directed by Nancy Savoca. In the romantic coming-of-age drama set in San Francisco, Phoenix portrayed a young U.S. Marine on the night before he is shipped off to Vietnam in November 1963. Taylor remarked that Phoenix suffered because he could not distance himself from his character, he also hadn't gotten into any drugs. Dash he was just drinking then, too. It was different, that was actually a hard part for him, because it was so radically different from who he was. He was such a hippie, and here he was playing this marine. It actually caused him a lot of discomfort. I don't think he enjoyed that, actually, getting into that psyche. Phoenix met actor Keanu Reeves while Reeves was filming Parenthood with Phoenix's brother, Joaquin and girlfriend, Martha Plimpton, however, Phoenix had reportedly auditioned for Bill in Reeves' then-current film Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure before the role was taken by Alex Winter. The two starred together for the first time, along with Kevin Kline, Tracy Ullman and Joan Plowright, in 1990's I Love You to Death and again in Gus Van Sant's avant-garde film My Own Private Idaho. In his review for Newsweek, David Anson praised Phoenix's performance, the campfire scene in which Mike awkwardly declares his unrequited love for Scott is a marvel of delicacy. In this, and every scene, Phoenix immerses himself so deeply inside his character you almost forget you've seen him before, it's a stunningly sensitive performance, poignant and comic at once. For his role in My Own Private Idaho, River Phoenix won Volpe Cup for Best Actor at the 1991 Venice Film Festival. In addition, 21-year-old Phoenix received Independent Spirit Award for Best Male Lead and National Society of Film Critics Award for Best Actor, becoming the second youngest winner of the former. The film and its success solidified Phoenix's image as an actor with edgy, leading man potential. In that period Phoenix was beginning to use marijuana, cocaine and heroin with some friends. In the book Gus Van Sant wrote about Phoenix, Pink, the director said clearly that Phoenix was not a regular drug user but only an occasional one, and that the actor had a more serious problem with alcohol. Phoenix had always tried to hide his addictions because he feared that they might ruin his career as they did his relationship with Martha Plimpton. Phoenix teamed up with Robert Redford and again with Sidney Poitier for the conspiracy-slash-espionage thriller Sneakers, 1992. A month later he began production on Sam Shepard's art house ghost western Silent Tongue, which was released in 1994, he also was beaten out for the role of Paul by Brad Pitt in A River Runs Through It. He made a cameo appearance in Van Sant's Even Cowgirls Get the Blues, 1993, co-starring his sister Rain. Phoenix then starred in Peter Bogdanovic's country music-themed film, The Thing Called Love, 1993, the last completed picture before his death. Phoenix began a relationship with co-star Samantha Mathis on the set. River's sudden death prevented him from playing various roles. Phoenix was due to begin work on Neil Jordan's interview with the Vampire, 1994, two weeks after his death.
he was to play the part of Daniel Malloy, the interviewer, which then went to Christian Slater, who donated his entire $250,000 salary to two of Phoenix's favorite charitable organizations, Earth Save and Earth Trust. The film has a dedication to Phoenix after the end credits. The Guardian suggested in 2003 it was likely that Phoenix would have followed, Interview with the Vampire, by appearing as Susan Sarandon's son in Safe Passage, 1994, a role that went to Sean Astin. Phoenix had signed on to the lead role in Broken Dreams, a screenplay written by John Borman and Neil Jordan, to be directed by Borman, and co-starring Winona Ryder. The film was put on hold due to Phoenix's death. In June 2012, it was announced that Caleb Landry Jones had been cast in the role. Gus Van Sant had persuaded Phoenix to agree to play the role of Cleve Jones in Milk when he was originally planning on making the movie in the early 1990s. The role was eventually played by Emil Hirsch in 2008. When asked in Interview magazine, you were going to do a movie with River about Andy Warhol, right? Van Sant said, yeah. River kind of looked like Andy in his younger days. But that project never really went forward. In 1988, Phoenix was reportedly carrying around a copy of the 1978 memoir The Basketball Diaries. He had heard a movie version was in the works and wanted to play the autobiographical role of Jim Carroll. The film was sent into hiatus on numerous occasions with Phoenix being cited as the main contender for the role each time. The Basketball Diaries was made in 1995 with 19-year-old Leonardo DiCaprio in the lead. He had expressed interest in playing the 19th-century poet Arthur Rambo in Total Eclipse, 1995, by Polish director Agnieszka Holland. Phoenix died before the movie was cast, with the role eventually going to Leonardo DiCaprio. Although Phoenix's movie career was generating most of the income for his family, it has been stated by close friends and relatives that his true passion was music. Phoenix was a singer, songwriter, and accomplished guitarist. He had begun teaching himself guitar at age five and had stated in an interview for E in 1988 that his family's move to Los Angeles when he was nine was so that he and his sister could become recording artists. I fell into commercials for financial reasons and acting became an attractive concept. Before securing an acting agent, Phoenix and his siblings tried to forge a career in music by playing cover versions on the streets of the Westwood district of LA, often being moved along by police because gathering crowds would obstruct the sidewalk. From the first fruits of his film success, Phoenix saved $650 to obtain his prized possession, a guitar with which he wrote what he described as progressive, ethereal folk rock. While working on A Night in the Life of Jimmy Reardon in 1986, Phoenix had written and recorded a song, Hard to Get, specifically for the end credits of the movie. 20th Century Fox cut it from the completed film but director William Richard put it back into place for his director's cut some years later. It was during filming that Phoenix met Chris Blackwell of Island Records, this meeting would later secure Phoenix a two-year development deal with the label. Phoenix disliked the idea of being a solo artist and relished collaboration, therefore he focused on putting together a band. Aleka's Attic were formed in 1987 and the lineup included his sister Rain. Phoenix was committed to gaining credibility by his own merit and maintained that the band would not use his name when securing performances that were not benefits for charitable organizations. Phoenix's first release was Across the Way, co-written with bandmate Josh Mackay, which was released in 1989 on a benefit album for Peter titled Tame Yourself. In 1991, Phoenix wrote and recorded a spoken word piece called Curry Curry for Milton Nascimento's album Tuxai. Also in 1991, the Alekazetic track Too Many Colors was used in the film My Own Private Idaho, which included Phoenix in a starring role. Alekazetic disbanded in 1992, but Phoenix continued writing and performing. 
While working on the film The Thing Called Love in 1993, Phoenix wrote and recorded the song Lone Star State of Mine, which he performs in the movie. The song was not included on the film's soundtrack album. In 1996, the Alekha's Attic track Note to a Friend was released on the 1996 Benefit album In Defense of Animals, Volume 2 and featured Flea of Red Hot Chili Peppers on bass. Phoenix had collaborated with friend John Frusciante after his first departure from Red Hot Chili Peppers and the songs Hide Down and Well I've Been were released on Frusciante's second solo album Smile from the Streets You Hold in 1997. Phoenix was an investor in the original House of Blues, founded by his good friend and sneakers co-star Dan Aykroyd, in Cambridge, Massachusetts which opened its doors to the public after serving a group of homeless people on Thanksgiving Day 1992. Phoenix was a dedicated animal rights, environmental and political activist. He was a prominent spokesperson for PETA and won their humanitarian award in 1992 for his fundraising efforts. In 1990, Phoenix wrote an environmental awareness essay about Earth Day targeted at his young fan base, which was printed in Seventeen magazine. Phoenix was a vegan from the age of seven. His first girlfriend Martha Plimpton recalled, Once when we were fifteen, River and I went out for a fancy dinner in Manhattan, and I ordered soft-shell crabs. He left the restaurant and walked around on Park Avenue, crying. I went out and he said, I love you so much, why? He had such pain that I was eating an animal, that he hadn't impressed on me what was right. He financially aided a great many environmental and humanitarian organizations, and bought 800 acres, 320 hectares, of endangered rainforest in Costa Rica. As well as giving speeches at rallies for various groups, Phoenix and his band often played environmental benefits for well-known charities as well as local ones in the Gainesville, Florida area. He campaigned for Bill Clinton in the 1992 U.S. presidential election. He also complained about Chernobyl disaster, the Gulf War and the Exxon Valdez incident. During the filming of the 1986 film The Mosquito Coast, Phoenix began a romance with his co-star Martha Plimpton who, as he remembers, was someone he hadn't gotten along with during the time that the two were child stars. They dated from February 1986 to June 1989, also co-starring in the 1988 film Running on Empty. The relationship ended due to his drug use. Plimpton stated when we split up, a lot of it was that I had learned that screaming, fighting, and begging wasn't going to change him. He had to change himself, and he didn't want to yet. The two, however, maintained a close friendship throughout the remainder of his life. For the last year of his life, in 1993, he dated his The Thing Called Love co-star Samantha Mathis. Mathis was with Phoenix and his siblings Rain and Joaquin at the Viper Room nightclub on the night he overdosed. In late October 1993, Phoenix had returned to Los Angeles for one day after flying back from one week in New Mexico. Before that, he had spent six to seven weeks in Utah to complete the three weeks of interior shots left on his last project, Dark Blood. Rob Brunner of Entertainment Weekly reported that 11 days of interior shooting in Los Angeles remained on Dark Blood, which producer Joanne Seller said would take three weeks. According to director George Sloyser, the cast had two days off while construction work on the interior sets was completed. Seller said Phoenix died the night of the first day of shooting. The film was finally completed in 2012. On the evening of October 30, 1993 River showed up to the Viper Room, a Hollywood nightclub partly owned by Johnny Depp with his girlfriend Samantha Mathis and Phoenix's brother Joaquin and sister Rain. Phoenix was to perform with the band P. The band featured Phoenix's friends Flea and John Frusciante from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Gibby Haynes of the Butthill Surfers, Al Jorgensen of Ministry, and Depp. According to Bob Forrest, during the performance by P, Phoenix tapped him on the shoulder to tell him he was not feeling well and that he thought he had overdosed. 
Forrest said to Phoenix that he did not think that he was overdosing because he could stand and talk. Nonetheless, he offered to take Phoenix home, but Phoenix declined, saying he was feeling better. A few moments later, a commotion erupted in the club and Forrest went outside to find Mathis screaming as Phoenix was lying on the sidewalk having convulsions. Unable to determine whether Phoenix was breathing, Joaquin called 911. Rain proceeded to give Phoenix mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. According to Gibby Haynes, the band was performing their song Michael Stipe while Phoenix was outside the venue having seizures on the sidewalk. When the news filtered through the club, Flea left the stage and rushed outside. By that time, Paramedics had arrived on the scene and found Phoenix turning cyanotic, suffering from cardiac arrest, in its terminal rhythm, asystole. They administered medication in an attempt to restart his heart. When the ambulance arrived, Phoenix was still alive and Flea went with him to Cedars Sinai Medical Center. Attempts to resuscitate Phoenix at the hospital were unsuccessful. He was pronounced dead at 1.51 a.m. PST on the morning of October 31, 1993, at the age of 23. Years later, Samantha Mathis said that she and Phoenix had only intended to drop off Phoenix's siblings at the Viper Room on the way to her house, but that Phoenix decided to stay for a while after he was asked to perform with the band. She insisted that during their relationship, she had known him to be sober. However, Mathis added that the moments immediately prior to his death, she knew something was going on. Mathis added I didn't see anyone doing drugs, that night, but he was high in a way that made me feel uncomfortable. She added that the heroin that killed him didn't happen until he was in the Viper room. Mathis went to the restroom, and on her way back to the table, she saw Phoenix scuffling with John. The bouncers removed both men from the club. Mathis shouted at the other man, what have you done? What are you on? Another person responded, leave him alone, you're spoiling his high. By that time, Phoenix had fallen to the ground and begun to convulse. Following Phoenix's death, the club became a makeshift shrine, with fans and mourners leaving flowers, pictures and candles on the sidewalk, as well as graffiti messages on the walls of the venue. A sign was placed in the window that read, with much respect and love to River and his family, the Viper Room is temporarily closed. Our heartfelt condolences to all his family, friends and loved ones. He will be missed. The club remained closed for a week. Depp continued to close the club every year on October 31st until selling his share in 2004. The autopsy report, finalized on November 15, 1993, stated that there were high concentrations of morphine and cocaine in the blood, as well as other substances in smaller concentrations. The cause of death was acute multiple drug intoxication. On November 24, 1993, Arlen, who later changed her name to Hart, Phoenix published an open letter in the Los Angeles Times on her son's life and death. It read, in part, his friends, co-workers and the rest of our family know that River was not a regular drug user. He lived at home in Florida with us and was almost never a part of the club scene in Los Angeles. He had just arrived in LA from the pristine beauty and quietness of Utah where he was filming for six weeks. We feel that the excitement and energy of the Halloween nightclub and party scene were way beyond his usual experience and control. How many other beautiful young souls, who remain anonymous to us, have died by using drugs recreationally? It is my prayer that Rivers leaving in this way will focus the attention of the world on how painfully the spirits of his generation are being worn down. River made such a big impression during his life on Earth. He found his voice and found his place. And even River, who had the whole world at his fingertips to listen, felt deep frustration that no one heard. What is it going to take? Chernobyl wasn't enough. Exxon Valdez wasn't enough. A bloody war over oil wasn't enough. If rivers passing opens our global heart, then I say, thanks dear, beloved son, for yet another gift to all of us.
Phoenix's father was angry at John Frusciante over his son's death. In an interview, he said if I find him, I'm going to kill him. He's very rich and very young, 23 like River, but he's a terrible addict who's become a pusher. The family never pressed charges against anyone for their son's death. Before his death, Phoenix's image, one he bemoaned in interviews, had been squeaky clean, owing in part to his public dedication to his various social, political, humanitarian, and dietary interests that were not always popular in the 1980s. As a result, his death elicited a vast amount of coverage from the media. Phoenix was described by one writer as the vegan James Dean, and comparisons were made regarding the youth and sudden deaths of both actors. Actors who have credited Phoenix as a major influence as well as paving the way for them include Leonardo DiCaprio, Jared Leto, James Franco, and many more. During his acceptance speech for Best Actor at the 92nd Academy Awards, Joaquin Phoenix honored his brother by stating when he was 17, my brother, River, wrote this lyric. He said, run to the rescue with love and peace will follow. Joaquin and partner Rooney Mara named their son, River, after him. <laughs>